Hey, Minister Change. Brother Al at your service. Sin of the Saints, this podcast of truth, you is or you ain't. Let's break down the facts. It's Minister Change, Minister Change. Blessings, 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 wonderful people with God. It's your boy, Minister Change, the minister that meet people where they at and love on them like our Lord Jesus Christ does. I have a guest with me tonight, the minister. What's going on, fam? Tell me, tell me how you feeling tonight, bro. Tell me how you feeling. Maintaining, man. I'm, I'm, I'm all good over here, man. It's just blessing God. I'm excited about, you know, what you guys got going on. The platform is off the chain, man. I checked out your site. Hey, man. Hey, man, bro. Hey, that's the way God is, man. God is good all the time, bro. The way he works stuff, man. I mean, we just can't do. Hey, bro, we're going to start this interview off, uh, man. What you telling the people, man? Where are you from, bro? Where was you born and raised? Oh, this is my home, Atlanta, man. Atlanta, Georgia. This is where I'm from. Straight out the A. Yeah. I'm from actually Tucker, Georgia, but we moved from Tucker, Georgia over into the Decatur area. And from there, I ended up in Atlanta. Okay, okay. From the A, from the A, you a Braves fan, man? <laughs> I am. I am definitely. I'm I'm a, I'm a faithful fan either way they go, you know. I, I stay down okay. with the team. Okay, good. That's good, bro. Hey, bro, Um, am I saying it right, the minister? Yeah, you're saying it right. They call me yeah, okay, the minister. Okay. okay, the minister. Hey, bro, would you happen to have, man, a favorite Bible scripture, bro, that you like to go to in a time of need, man, just to kind of comfort your spirit a little bit? Yeah, um, Luke 10 and 19. I've given you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Yeah. Amen. Amen, bro. Bro, that's good. That's good, man. That's real good, bro. That's a good scripture. Hey, hey, hey minister, yeah. man. If some if a total stranger, man, was to ask you about your character, man, how would you describe yeah. yourself? Hmm. I would tell him <laughs> I, if I would have to say that, man, I'm a, I'm an individual that's been through a lot. And uh, you may be able to uh, see that, but I've, I've, God has brought me, Jesus has brought me a long way. I've been through a lot, but he's brought me a long way. So um, character wise, I've suffered a lot, man. So, so, so um, I'm super thankful is all I can say. Amen. Amen. That's good, bro. That's good, minister. That's, that's, that's good, bro. Most definitely that's good. Hey, bro, you know, man, with a lot of stuff going on in this life, man, and, and and we we get down sometimes, man. And sometimes our spirits just grieve, bro. Last night, man, I shed a few tears, brother. When was the last time you cried, man? This afternoon. <laughs> man. This, this afternoon, man. I, I was uh like there was something I wanted, and 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 God showed me today, like a partner of mine said, "Dang, man! Every time I turn around, God giving you something." And I said, "Yeah," I said, "Yeah," because I, I what I told him was, I said, "I'm a tithe payer," and then okay. so, but. But after that, though, I was in the backyard because I wanted something. I wanted a uh, a trip, a chipper uh, shredder, a machine that cost okay. about seven hundred dollars. And uh, okay. I was looking, and I, I came across one on Facebook Marketplace that wasn't too far from my home. And the um, the lady said she wanted fifty dollars for it. Oh and man! So I was like, oh. so I know I know she ain't gonna have it long. So I went. She was actually in Douglasville, so I left from home. I got my daughter's car. Actually, she rode up there with me. And we mm -hmm. park in front of uh, Arbor Place Mall. And my daughter said, well, Greg, daddy, I'm going in the mall. I say, all right, mm -hmm. you go. So I'm sitting there waiting on the lady to contact me about the chipper shredder. And Misha was gone by the hour. I said, okay. So I said, God, <laughs> I said, you know what? If it's mine, you know, she'll hit me up. But if it's not, I'm good. Maybe it's meant. It's not meant for me to have it. And at that very mm -hmm. moment, a, 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 a Bing came in through my messenger. And it was her. She said, I had something I had to do. I'm sorry. I just made it back home and my phone. I didn't have my phone with me. She said, um, she, she wasn't but four minutes away from the mall. So I left my daughter at the mall and went and got it. And uh, mm. turns out, man, her mom and dad had just passed about a year ago. And uh, mm. she had a father's house and he had so much stuff out there, man. And uh, yeah, I bought the chipper shredder for $50, man. Amazing. Man. God is just, yeah. So when that hit me and I was in the back of my house, just thinking, how good God had been to me and how I just got, man, you'd be surprised what I got in this house. <laughs> man. <laughs> I, broke, I broke down. Yeah, I'm, man, please. This the studio I'm in right now, man, is actually, mm. uh, whoo, this, it, God bless me, man. The studio yeah, I man. got was a blessing to me. 
me. You know what I'm saying? Everything that's in here, man, from the uh, screen yeah. and everything in my studio, this was a blessing to me, man. So, I mean, for real, man. Look at God. Man, look at God. Look at God. Man, God is good all the time, bro. All the time. Yeah, he's he working is. behind he's working behind the scenes when he when he, when we don't we don't even know what he's doing, bro. Yeah. Hey, right. Man. And that's why I start crying because I, I, I knew I knew I wasn't worthy of what he was doing, but he straightened me right quick, Greg. He said, All right, okay, I got that. I know you're crying, but we need to get up and get in the backyard with this stripper shredder. We need to get some work done. So he let me cry yeah. for a couple of minutes, but I, I broke down because I you know, he said, I, I yeah. hear that. You need to, you know, get that machine in that backyard. And but he's been so good to me, man. Change, he's been so good to me, bro. I mean, it's just amazing. Man. I'm man, gonna tell you, man. Woo, man, that's 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 a good testimony right there, bro. And that joy, I can tell you got that joy in your spirit. See, there's some of them tears of joy, man. It's the happiness you just don't know how to. That's why I start crying because I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I start crying because you can't process it physically. It has to come out in tears or shouting yeah. or screaming or something. It's gonna come out. It's gonna manifest itself somehow. And I, I said, God, yeah. I said, you just you do good. This is you too good. When somebody say that down here on planet Earth, too good to be true, you know it's too good to be true. But when you say that about him, you mean exactly that. You are too good. You're just too good. Amen. Amen, bro. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Most definitely, Minister. Man. Amen. Growing up, man, have you ever been been um, deprived, man? Or have you went, went without, man, the basic needs of life, man? Food, shelter, light, yeah. water, man? Yeah. Have you ever experienced yeah. Of course, man. Well, you know, when I came up, man, my uh, as a real, real young child, man, when I came up, my mama had love and um, but my stepfather was very abusive. So I came up in a home that was full of alcohol and fights, bad ones, too, man. Like I, mm. I mean, it was, it was bad. One instance, my mom and stepfather were fighting and, you know, he went to throw a ceramic vaporizer at her. And I was standing in between the two of them, man, and that thing exploded in my face. It cut my eye open. And um, Man. I'm I'm sitting there standing in between the two of them, and and then that's when the fight stopped. That's what confused me. Why would you fight if you're gonna fight? You gonna wait till I get injured to stop? I mean, if it was just that serious to fight, this is what I'm thinking as a child. Like like why stop now? Yeah. But blood's running down my face and my clothes. So they took me to the doctor and. the I mean, it's like nobody asked any questions. It was quiet as a mouse in there while they saw my eye up, man. And and it didn't stop there. So I got home, and a couple of weeks later, alcoholism was back in the picture, and so. I don't know if my mom, you know, was partaking of that. I, I think all of this started when she met this man. And yeah, so yeah. as I began to grow up, I was in that environment, man, just the violence and the fighting. And I came home from school one day. She's got a, both her eyes were swollen closed and she's in the closet. This man threatening her and cut a eight inch, 10 inch gash in her back with a fishing knife, man, all this, this kind of stuff. So when I got older, like I had this, this hatred in my heart for this man, man, I, Ooh, boy, yeah. look at him. Seriously. But it was nothing I could do at my age yeah. as a child. So, um, my, you know, I grew up just with a lot of confusion in my head, trying to figure stuff out. So um, come time when I went to like even elementary school, my mama came up to the school one time. She was intoxicated and we were outside on the mm -hmm. playground. And uh, mm -hmm. when I saw her, it shocked me, but it hurt me. I was shocked because of, you know, embarrassment was trying to set in, but it was her hurt. Because I knew she was dealing with something. I knew it had something to do with that man, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I went from elementary to high school. Everything that's still going on. So when I got in the eleventh uh, grade, I dropped out of high school. Man, uh, I got hooked on crack cocaine in 1985. And so okay. at that point, I dropped out of high school. And I knew enough to know that I couldn't take that. At that point, we weren't still me and my mom and my brothers. We weren't still staying with with James. That's what it what his name was. We were living mm -hmm. with my aunt. And so after I got hooked on the cocaine, I had a choice. I could either go back home and try to support that habit, which I knew there was no stealing in my house. You weren't finna, you weren't finna pick up nothing in a stealing nature around my aunt. You could forget it. <laughs> and so I ended up with that fear. I, I ended up running away from home. So instead of going home facing what could have been a very uh, lethal situation, I ended up. I say I'd rather face the world. So I ran away from home with that addiction. And uh, one thing led to another. Man, it got even worse. So I'm now I'm in the streets. I don't have no job. I lost my job at Taco Bell. And so now I'm in the streets trying to get the money to do the drug. And I'm going from one thing to another to try to because crack cocaine is a beast, man. It's a it's a spirit that will not let you go. And people don't understand the significance of it. If you take a hit, 
your body is virgin to the to the aspect of a drug interaction to enter your system and once mm -hmm. it's there it, it created like a it was like a, a a climatic response and an overtake it just immediately took me over i had never experienced anything like it and my body wanted right. more but here's the problem here's the problem you never received the same climatic experience you had Mm -hmm. Have the very first time. your body had never had it before. So you spend the rest of your time trying to get the same feeling you got the first time, which leads to overdoses. Man. But the desire for the drug sends people over the edge to do the things that they do, to, to do the to do the drugs, to um gender confused activity, to rob, to steal, even to kill. I've seen people overdose in front of my face, you know what I'm saying? Because they wanted to get Man. higher than they'd ever been. And, and and that's the instance that I saw in one of the uh projects i was in here in atlanta and bowen holmes a guy came up in there and he was behind the apartment it was an afternoon on a friday and i said man let me get a hit he said no nah, i ain't giving nobody none of this bro i said i can't get a hit he said no nah, man i'm gonna get higher he said i'm gonna get higher than i've ever been in my life he put all the dope on the pipe at the same time and lit wow. it up and uh his eyes got as big as 50 cent pieces man and he burst his heart he died right there oh, behind man. the apartment so wow wow man yeah, that's, that's just man, so, you know man, bro and then a um, uh, minister, man, after going through all that, man, and seeing that, man, what was your final point to say, man, after going through all that hurt that I'm going to have to get help, man? What, what made you, this is a testimony moment, or where you finally said, I had enough. I got to get help. I can't continue living like this or I'm not going to be alive. Man. I had almost over those four times, three separate suicide attempts. I was dealing with men and women to get money to get crack cocaine. I breaking. I had robbed my mama. I was robbing drug dealers. I had people looking for me. I hit on my head. I tried to commit suicide. Three separate failed suicide attempts. Tried cutting my wrist, taking pills with alcohol, put a pistol to my head, and I wanted to get out of here. That was one instance. I was standing at the train station, a couple of blocks from the crack trap where I was at, and man, I'm standing there, and all of a sudden my legs just went out, like like instantaneous paralysis on the on the train platform and i could not stand up my legs would not respond and god said that that is the drug destroying your brain cells and so but i i, I did regain uh i did regain physical ability but there was a point where i was just saying sometimes i'd be getting high and i said lord god i said you need to set me free i said if you don't save me i'm a dead man I said, I need you to set me free. And I'd be crying. I, I would get into altercations with people in the crack house because I would be praying and asking God that this help me with my problem. And be like, look, nigga, you're going to have to do one or two things. You're going to either have to smoke the dope or you got to get out the crack house because this ain't a church. Oh, we in here to get help. But I would say, I said, that might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell them that might be. But if you die while you're in here, we're going to have a problem. I said, so, I mean, I, I know I'm an addict just like y'all, but I don't want to go to hell behind this. I need help. Amen. Yes, Amen. And someone would take, well, we don't want help. So you can take that somewhere else, man. I, I've been in some situations, man. Man. Man, and, and going going through, man, all, all that, man, and and, and 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 the dope houses, man. Where where, where did you find your hope at, man? What what, what gave you the hope? That, that, I well, mean, you know, I know. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, even before I got hooked on dope, you know, we was going to church. My mama and my aunt says, you know, after, um, well, after the situation with my stepdad, we moved over to my aunt's house and we, we were going to church almost all the time. You know what I'm saying? So my exposure to, to Jesus came through Lily Hill Baptist church. Okay. And, uh, that's the church that my aunt was taking me to. So while we was in there, I would hear people praising God and singing these hymns and these, cause we, uh, it was a Holy Ghost field church, man. And 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 I got baptized in that church. I, I can't tell you, I couldn't put my finger on it, but something happened when I got baptized. I know I swallowed a lot of water. <laughs> but anyway, so okay. so as I was as I was uh going through them changes, something inside me kept saying, just call on Jesus. Then my mama, before she passed, she told me, she said, Greg. If you ever find yourself in a situation you can't get out of, you need to call on the name of Jesus. And she said, now, when you do, you can't play with it. You got to be for real because Jesus ain't the one. He is not the one to play with. So my mama was able to see me clean and sober before she died. But let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. This is going to this is going to blow your mind. I'm going to tell you what happened to me, how I got delivered. Man. In, in August of 2002, 
But let me just do this. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity to give this Amen. testimony. I give yes. you glory and honor and yes. praise. Surrender, submit, and commit everything unto you for your glory. Let it be done according to your will. All right. So I'm on Boulevard downtown in August of 2002 on a Friday on the afternoon of August of 2002 in Fourth Ward. And, and I'm trying to get money for cocaine. I'm trying to get the money for the crack. And it's like no matter who I ask and how persistent I was, I couldn't get the money. And I wanted to get high. I was on a, I was on a mission. I was on a mission, bro. So something inside me said, well, well, you know, if you, if you use, if you use God's name, if you use the name of Jesus, you can get the money. Mm. So, and so that's what I started doing. I, I was walking around telling people with God is my witness in Jesus name. I just got out of jail and just need to get some money to get something to eat. Now, two groups of people. The dope boys and the ones in the trap that knew me be like, nigga, you need to get out of the trap before something happened to you. We know your hustle. But people that did not know me, um, that would be walking around. Uh, some of them would just give me some change just to get out of the faces. But then I would hear some people tell me, say, brother Greg, I'm going to give you this money. But if you lying, that's between you and God. So mm. I got the money. I made a hundred and five dollars in an hour. Man. I'm gonna tell you about. I'm gonna tell you about. I got it. I got the money. So before I was, and I was headed to the crack trap. I came off Edgewood Boulevard, Edgewood on the boulevard, headed to the crack trap, and something said to me, "Why don't you try one more place?" So I turned around and I looked over at this row of of, of buildings to my right and behind me, and there was this place called Crowning Glory Hair Braiding Salon. And something okay. just drew me to the door. I knocked on the door and this black woman, tall, kind of curly, crinkly hair, came to the door. She said, how, hi, 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 how may I help you? And I said, well, ma'am, my name is Brother Greg. And um, I said, forgive me. I said, but um, with God is my witness in Jesus name. I just got out of jail and I just need to get some money to get something to eat. And she said, uh, she said, well, she said, the, the spirit of God is not with you on this one. And I said, what you mean? She said, well, the, mm. the, the Holy Spirit is telling me that you're lying. I said, ma'am, I'm not lying. She said, yeah, yes, you are. And she said, where have you come from? And I said, I just told you where I came from. I just came out of the street. I'm hungry. I've been sleeping in abandoned cars and apartments. She said, where, where do you live at? And, and so this went on for a minute. She said, I'll tell you what. She said, I'm not going to give you any money. Because I don't feel led to. The spirit of God is telling me that you're lying. I can't let you in my truck because I don't trust you. She said, but if you'll tell me where there's a place around here where you can get you something to eat, you can start walking and I'll meet you there. Otherwise, I can't do anything for you because um, something is telling me that there's something wrong with you. And I said, all right. I said, well, there's a church's chicken down the street here on Auburn Avenue. She said, OK, you start walking. I'll go in here and close up and I'll lock up and I'll meet you down there. I said, OK, mm. so I walked into the church's chicken. By the time I got there, she passed me in a white Ford, uh, Ford Explorer. Was it a Cadillac Escalade? One of the two very beautiful truck. When I got mm. down there, she was already in the building. So I walked to the door and she was smiling. I asked, her, I said, ma'am, why are you smiling? She said, I'm smiling because you came. And she said, if you didn't, I wouldn't have never done this for anyone else. Mm. And she said, Brother Greg, come on in here. And that, that struck me strange because as a junkie, people didn't do that often. So yeah. she said, come on inside, man. And I, I ordered everything that I wanted out of that place, man. I think I walked out that restaurant with about 30 to 40 dollars worth of food. I mean, it was so much food. They had a triple bag to order. I had okra, chicken, corn, um, uh, you name it. I, I had it. The green beans. I, I walked out of that with a family meal. So when I was getting ready to go and I came out the door, she said, uh, she looked at me in my face and she said, Brother Greg, you want to tell me what's going on? I said, what's going on? Ain't nothing going on. She said, yeah. She said, yes, yes, there is. So I, I mean, I fought that thing, man. She she petitioned me about what the problem was for about five minutes straight. And then I finally just broke down. And I just looked in her face. I said, ma'am, I said, I didn't mean to lie to you. I'm sorry. I said, but I do have a problem. Mm. She said, what is it? And I said, I've been on cocaine for 12 years. I said, mm. I got a fiance at home in Douglasville and I've left her. I've been gone from home for a week and we just moved out there and I left her and I came back down here to get high. And I said, I, I can't help myself. It's like every time I try to get back on my feet, the devil just jumps on my back again and just drags me back down. I said, I, I can't seem to get away from this thing. She said, well, she said, Greg, she said, um, you know, the God that I serve, he'll change your life. 
Mm. I said, I don't doubt that. I said, I, I don't doubt that he'll change my life. I said, I guess he just ain't ready. I said, she said, no. She said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, but the God that I serve, he'll change your life. I said, I respect that. She said, would you like me to pray for you? I said, no. And she said, why? Mm. I said, because I've had preachers and pastors and ministers pray for me before and nothing happened. She said, I understand that too. She said, but the God that I serve will change your life. Can I pray for you? I said, nah. I said, I respect that, but nah. I said, but I will pray for you though. She said, would you really? I said, yeah. She said, come on, I love that. So I touched and agreed with her and I said, Lord, I wanna thank you for this woman that took the time out to come down here and get me this food. I wanna thank you for her concern. Thank you for her love. Thank you for her just being the kind of person she is. I said, God, I ask that you bless her business, bless her life, you know, uh, bless her with abundance in her business. And just for her just being kind to me, I ask that you just, you just bless her. And my heart went out to her. You know, I might have been a junkie, but my I, I had a heart. So when I got through, um, she looked at me. She said, you know, I'm so thankful, so thankful for that prayer. You don't know what that means to me. I said, well, yeah, I said, you're, mm. you're, uh, you're welcome. And she said, I'm going to tell you something, Brother Greg. She said, uh, God's going to change your life. I told her again. I said, I know that, but, Man. you know, it's a good time. And she said, no, hear me when I tell you that the Lord Jesus is going to change your life. I want you to remember me saying that now. So I told her again, I said, all right. She said, well, listen, I got some things I got to do. I got to get out of here and I'll be on my way. She said, but don't forget what I told you. I said, I won't. And she said it again. She said, God is going to change your life. She got in her truck, she blowed the horn and she pulled off and she was, she came out of the parking lot of churches and she was headed toward downtown Atlanta. So when she got in, uh, mm -hmm. after she left, I got this food in my hand I got a brand new crack pipe in my front right pocket and I still got this hundred and five dollars mm. in my possession. Mm. So I'm going up the street, right? And then my mind is hustling now. My mouth starting to starting to water. My stomach is bubbling and I'm saying to myself, OK, so when I get up here, since I'm, I don't want this food, I'm going to sell this to get me some more money for another hit and then uh, maybe get mm -hmm. some corn liquor or something like that. Uh, but I'm, I know for a fact I'm not going to keep it. So when I got off Edgewood and hit Boulevard where the crack track was, I was about a block away from it. And as I was walking down the street, uh, it got quiet, man. I heard this hushing noise. Something went, shh. And when I tell man. you, everything in my vicinity was dead, dead mouse on cotton quiet. The leaves, the wind stopped. The leaves on the trees stopped blowing. And I'm looking around like, man, what the? Whoa. <laughs> the only thing I could hear was my feet hitting the ground and the plastic from that bag rubbing up against my leg. And then I heard um, this woman's voice and she began to speak. She said, Lord, she said, Lord, God, I just met this young man. Lord, he tells me that his name is Gregory. And Lord, he God, she, and then she went into she said, Lord, you know, I love you. She said, I, I love you with all my heart. I pay my tithes and offerings. She said, I, I trust you with all my heart. I gave my life and I will give my life for you. She said, but there's this young man that needs your help, God. He needs your help, God. And she she said his name is Gregory. And at this point, I'm looking around in the street like, nigga, you must be crazy. Because <laughs> I don't see anybody. Wow. But I hear wow. it. I hear it clear. I hear it clear as a bell. So I'm still walking. And she said, mm -hmm. um, Lord, he says that he has a fiance in Douglasville that's waiting for him. And he he's left her there and he's in the street and he's doing the drugs. And Lord, he says that every time he tries to get back on his feet again, the devil just jumps on his back and takes him back down. She said, Lord, the devil's trying to destroy this man. Please, please save his soul, God. Please save. And it's at the point where now, well, I'm about to lose it because I don't see nobody, but I'm still hearing this crying and 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 this 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 just she just broken, man. And so when her man. voice, it's kind of like the volume just got volume down on it. And I heard this voice immediately when she was done say, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And uh, that day, man, after 12 years of cocaine, ice, ecstasy, heroin, acid, powder, crack, cigarettes, alcohol, PCP, uh, homosexual activity, uh, robbing people, all of that, that day I stopped. It's been 25 years. They picked up another pipe and picked up another drink and picked up another needle and picked up another nothing. Man. You know, and I, was, and I was smoking two man, to three packs man. of cigarettes a day. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. People think they addicted. You think you're addicted. That's what you think. But the presence of God, the Holy Spirit got another thing for you. I'm telling you, the fear of God is the beginning of understanding. You're not as addicted as you think. Believe it. I'm telling you. Because, you know, God will come to get you on, on your terms or on his terms. 
Now, at the yeah. end of the day, his his mercy and grace endures forever. But you got to remember, the yeah. Bible also says, you know, the Lord is terrible in judgment. Mm. You know, he ain't the one you want to play with. You don't want to mm. play with his name. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, put yourself in a situation where you're manipulating the name of God. He don't play that blasphemy stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm Amen. telling you that my time was up with playing with him. My mm. time was up. And so man, look at my um, and even my wife, man, because she was in Douglasville when this happened to me. And I had been mm -hmm. going a whole week. So when I made it from down, down off of Edgewood, I made it, I couldn't go back to Douglasville. I had no money. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I made it to a mama's house. I walked all the way from downtown Edgewood to Boulder Crest Road where her mama lived. And I got there probably about 12, maybe one o'clock at night. Mm. But when I got to her mother's house, <clears throat> she let me in <clears throat> and I told her what had happened to me. She thought I was lying. And so she didn't kick me out, though. She, she, she did tell me she wanted me to get out of her house, though. But she didn't kick me out. So I called my wife from her mama's house and uh, I told her what happened to me. But before I could get it out, she heard my voice. She said, Greg, uh, she said, you, you calling me from my mama's house? I said, yeah. She said, no, nah, nigga, don't call. No, you ain't not going to call me. Matter of fact, you left me. You stranded me and your daughter and you gone and you've been gone for a whole week. And I, mm -hmm. and I bet you spent everything you had with, with whoever you was with. That's who, who mm. you need to go back to. Get out of my mother's house and don't call me no more. So I'm trying to explain to her what happened. But because mm. I had taken her through this so many times, she didn't want to hear it. So I called her a second time. Mm -hmm. And she picked up the phone and she said, man, what do you want? And, and I told her again, I said, you know, Lord, I said, Ray, the Lord doesn't set me free. She said, Greg, you're a liar. She said, you're a liar. And now you're lying on God. She said, mm. but don't worry because he's going to get you. I said, Rachel, he already has. She said, I don't want to hear it. She said, leave mm -hmm. me alone. And she hung up in my face. So I called her one more time. And she said, I need to think. Please don't call me no more. I need to think. And she said, if God done save you, let him tell me. Don't, don't call me no more. So that was that Friday night. Saturday, mm -hmm. I didn't hear from her at all. Sunday morning, she pulled up in front of her mama's house in a 99. Uh, Honda. I was. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It was a. What was it? A 90, 96, 1996 Honda Accord. Mm -hmm. And I ran out of a mama house down there to the car, and I said, Rachel. I said, What's going on? She said nothing. She said, God told me what He did for you, Greg. Come on, get in the car. We're going. Man, home. look at God. Man, that was 25, 20, 25 years ago, and we talking about a woman that had been through everything with me. Man, she had contracted a serious disease for me, and um, man. I stole her car like 15 times, but I never, I never stole any money from her, you know, but I tell you something. She had my back and I asked her one day, I said, why? Why don't you just leave me like your family and your friends tell me to tell mm -hmm. telling you to? Mm -hmm. She said, Greg, God has told me that you've got a good heart. Man, you know, look at that. And, 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 and if you could ever get off that drugs and that alcohol, then you'd make the perfect husband. And she said, that's what I'm praying for, that Man. the Lord would deliver you and set you free. And, man. And, and that's exactly what he did. Man, that's good, man. Hey, bro, that's that's man, that's 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 good, man. That's 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 a good story, man. That's a good testimony because you never know how the Lord is working behind the scene, and and just that little incident of you walking to that, finding that one lady, God was yeah. putting you on that path because you know our steps is already ordered, man. Our yeah. your steps was already ordered, like you said when you saw you and your mama wound coming out. God was reminding you that your steps was already ordered, bro. And 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 that moment created the great man, which God already had to plan. And it was glad you listened, because it seemed like if you wouldn't listen, bro, it wasn't gonna be good for you. It wasn't. No, nah, he told me. He, said, he let me know. He told me down the line. He said, he said, son, if you had made it to the crack trap that day, which is a place I wanted to go and smoke dope and sit down on the log in the back and drink corn liquor and smoke cigarettes, he said you would have been killed, shot and killed, and you would be in hell for eternity. That's what he told me. Man, that's good, bro. I'm glad he saved your life. Hey, um, uh, um, the minister, what, what, what is a positive word of encouragement, man, that you can give to anybody, man, that's been through what you're going through or going through some stuff, man, that just want to give up, that they, they want to go to that trap, man, smoke, they just, just want to do homosexuality, do a lot of just, just everything, man. Where is yeah. some hope? 
Where did man, you, look, 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 check this out right here, man. This is what I'm gonna tell you. This is what I'm gonna tell you because this is how I know God. I know God okay. to answer a prayer. I know him that to be who he said he is. Now, the thing is, man, a lot of times when people go to God and they got a problem, they want to you want to hide something from God. If you're going to tell him what your problem is, you got to be sincere, because the yes. fact is, you have to remember God. God, he ain't the one to play with. He has the conviction on your life, but he yes. don't want the conviction. What he wants is the confession. So if you got a problem, you can't help yourself and you need to tell God that. You need to tell him I have an issue I can't fix. I'm addicted and I need you to set me free. I don't want any of this load. I give it to you and I confess to you I got a problem and I believe you can set me free. And today I'm tired. I'm tired, God. Amen. And I need you. With your mouth you confess, believing with your heart. You know what I'm saying? You make this confession before God. You you make that confession and you can't play with it. You got to be really real about the fact because a, a lot of folks don't be real with God and he know your heart. He knows yeah. he knows everything about you. But if you're yeah. tired, he tells me I'm no respect of persons. What I do for one, I do for another. I am available to do that, which you ask. But it's based on what you believe. So if you go to God and you plan with him, don't expect to walk away with a deliverance. You're not going to get that. When you go yeah. to God and you say, I have an issue I cannot fix. And I believe you are who you say you are. I believe you can do what you say you can do. And I want to be delivered. And I, I know you can do this. And I give it to you right now with my whole heart. And he knows if you're real. If you mm. want it, that's how you get it. That's how you get it. The Man. Bible declares to come boldly before the throne of God and to make your petition made known. You can't play with it, man. Man. Time is short, man. People falling off, bro. You don't have man. time to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely, man. Woo, woo, bro, man. That's, man, that's good, bro. Look, you scared me. I'm going to make sure I run with the Lord, man. That story of that falling boy, what you seen, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a type of person I learned through revelation. I don't need to go through the situation, bro. I could take your story. That's why, that's one thing I love about the testimonies because testimonies will save lives. Hey, 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 brother, um, the minister, look, man, I was listening to your music, man, and it's banging, bro. It is banging. So I want you to tell the people a little bit about your talent, man, your, your, your music. Give me your email. If somebody want to want to hook up with you, man, do a track. We already see you got the studio, so we know you're ready to work, man. So just, just yeah. give the people a little a, a little bit of pointers or uh, a little, tell them a little bit about yourself and the music, man. Okay, so let, let me do this right quick, Mr. Change, because the Lord just told me to do something. I told you guys how I was out walking around lying on God to get the money to get high. I told you how the spirit of God got me and took me into the abyss where I saw the day I was born. Everything I'd have committed to the day I died. And I told you how he took me to hell and saved my soul. So I don't want y'all guys to leave off of this, this podcast and not hear what I just told you. Because he told me to tell it twice, once in the fashion that I did and just in a nutshell. As far as the music goes, man. Yeah, man, the concepts that I get and the music that I do, they come from my experiences. And God write all them lyrics, man. The stuff that I get, he gives it to me. And I'm so glad because I ain't ran out of ammo yet. You know, I've been signed with five major record labels when I was in the world. I was in Miami, Florida with LaFace, Breakaway, Foresight, Next Plateau, Vision Records out of South Florida, man. Uh, it was another label I was with, can Rough Town Records here in Atlanta, you know. But when I got delivered, God gave me a new song, you know. Man. So... The music that you got comes directly is a direct source from what I've been through and God sends them to me. But if you need to reach me, you can go to the website. You can catch me at www.therealminister.com. www.therealminister.com. As far as the music goes, you can find me on all streaming networks. I got two singles out right now. One is called Let It Go. Trap Mix featuring Luke G. He's a very prominent artist here in Atlanta, Georgia, working with uh, the station over there, uh, Radio One. Um, quite a quite a few people he deals with. Uh, but at the same time, you can you can find the music on any streaming site. Yeah, I got another single out called Party for the Lord. And a lot of people get that title mistress screw. Um, I, all I'm going to tell you is this. People celebrate they love for God in any way they see fit how they do so you know what i'm saying that's just like me going to your house and you preparing some food you're gonna prepare it for me the way you know how to prepare it okay so the yeah, way i prepare yeah. what i have for you from the lord is the way he gave it to me when i say party for the lord i'm celebrating i'm celebrating life from him in the way that i do so so you got a cat that came from the trap 
three mm. separate suicide attempts, almost over those four times. And my party, mm. my party for the Lord is different from yours. You might like, uh, you might do a little Holy Ghost dance. You know, you might, you, you might have a little cathedral thing going, but you know, I, I trap party for the Lord. I ain't talking about no dropping it like it's hot or like nothing like that. But I, like I say, I have a, I, I have a theme, a spiritual theme with God. The way I celebrate him is not like everybody else's. So it's only pertinent to where I came from. You know, and that uh, not all of my music is like that, though. If you go through the uh, catalog, because you'll find a lot of songs. He Lives, you'll find Take Me Back. And I got like he just gave me music for days, man. I got a love song that I wrote for the Lord that I actually like you to hear a little bit of. OK, if you got a second. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Let me let me hear a little bit of it. All right. So the, so the, so the, it's an acapella. It goes, I'm away from home. And I'm all alone, sitting on the curb, my money, your dope are gone. I can't go to my crib, cause my girl is mad. Cause once again, I took all of the money she had. Every time she trusted me, I let her down. Was a junkie then, and ain't no better now. When I'm searching the ground, looking for a hit. If I find me a nick, Lord, I swear I quit. But I know it's a lie, cause I need a blast. And it's gotten so bad, and I'm all in the trash. See, I made the choice, so I can't get mad. But my daughter's at home and counting on her dad to walk into the door and to give her a hug. But it's only a pipe dream because I'm on the drugs. Now I heard somewhere in the word that God's forgiven. But could he do it for me in spite of the way that I'm living? Because I'm out in the streets, strung out on the rock. I got nothing to lose. I might as well give it a shot. So I'm asking you. My father above, in the midst of all the alcohol and drugs, in the midst of me sleeping with men and women, would any of this stuff cancel my petition? Then I heard a voice in the heart of the trap. It was soft and sweet and said, I'll take you back. Baby, you'll take you back. It's a proven fact in the midst of this. And in spite of that, that'll leave his throne and go into the trap just to rescue you when it's as simple as that. So for prostitution, the snout and cane in Jesus' eyes, the sin is all the same. But if there's one thing that I know for sure he'll do is go out of his way just to get to you. So take all your worries and lay them down right at his feet and watch him turn them around. You may be ashamed, too ashamed to ask, but he's ready and willing to throw everything in the past. So just lift your hands toward the sky to the one that will never leave you or just lie. And I'll make the changes the ones you need to fix it all as long as you believe amen man woo, bro bro the mission woo, bro that's that man that right there man that right there man that's striking them bro. man that's striking them bro that right there is striking yeah. them bro amen 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 the, the minister man this has been a, a powerful interview man i mean I, I i really enjoyed it man and i know this interview is going to touch some souls man and change some lives man because testimonies man is what save lives brother Hey, bro, if, if you want to, man, I'm, I'm going to give you the pleasure, man, of praying us out, bro. You think you can pray us out, man? Man, I've been suffering long enough to have <laughs> God <laughs> stuck me up in prayer. You, you can't pray you you know, okay. you, if you if you ain't suffered, you can pray, Jack. That's all you got yeah, to say. Yeah, you already know. Okay, bro, I'm going to um, bow my head, man, and I'm going to let you go ahead and pray us out, brother. Go ahead. It's on you. So, dear Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just give you glory and honor and praise. We lift you up high above any others. We say thank you for your mercy and grace and your goodness just for being who you are and doing all the wonderfully beautiful things that you do. Lord God, I thank you for an opportunity to get on this platform, to magnify, to glorify, to praise and to raise your name high above any others, God. I know no other Lord. There is no other name under heaven by which man must be saved other than in the name of Jesus, God. And it is because of that passage right there that you have saved my soul, Father God. But I'm thankful that I won't have a shadow of a doubt. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, brother, that was powerful. Man, that was powerful, man. That was powerful, bro. Hey, man, I just want you to know, bro, I appreciate you, man. I'm going to continue hugging you in prayer, man. You continue hugging me, man. And I, I just want you to know, man, that I'm proud of you. To a, a lot of people hear God, but they don't listen. You heard God and you listen, man. You know, Woo. man, that, man, that's good, brother. Hey, man, God is good all the time, brother. I just want to tell you blessings, man. You have a blessed night, bro. Right on, change. Love you, bro. All right, love you too, bro. Oh, yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Hey. Yeah, it's your man, the minister, once again, still representing for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Somebody told me. Somebody, somebody told me. Let it go. Yo. Let it, let it go. Hey. Now, hey. Now, hey. God gave me 
a mess for everybody Whether you in the church or off in the trap You're thinking too, it determines where you're going So take the time to consider where you at Where every one of us has made mistakes It's just what it is, and life is a given But ain't no reason to be stuck in a season That you refuse to leave, cause you're dripping Cause you got a life and you got a brain Life is a journey, yo, this ain't a game But some of the stuff we decided to do To come up with the money is really a shame Whether you got it slinging in the trap Or you came up with it laying on your back I ain't finna trip, I know what it is Cause I done been there, this is a fact But I can't tell you the day is a way To come up out of the mud and the clay Stop you from drinking liquor every day And get you off of the weed and the yay He's the one you call on when you fall The one that help you get up over the wall All you gotta do is give it to Jesus He's the only one you need, that's all Keeping it real and hoping you're feeling it Really doesn't matter what you've been dealing with From the moment he came into my heart He been on the job and shorty you're killing it Seem like you've been in the game forever Rolling with the weed pills and the blow And maybe somebody done told you before But baby, today you need to let it go Now I'm 50 plus years old on the go Ain't nothing for me to get out on the road Pull up out the driveway onto the highway Into another city for the show So how do I stay hot like this clean With well, that's first John of 316 But you gotta gonna get in the word Cause that's the only way you ever be able to understand what I mean I'm like, hey, now come up with the blood Coming right up out the club Representing for the whole team And by no means will I sell out Cause I'm like so blessed I'm like so fresh I'm like so clean And by the blood of Jesus I'ma stay this way And if you know where I came from You know what I mean I give all the glory to the one true king This one goes out to all my peeps Off in them clubs and in them streets From Bowen home to tech wood to mechanicsville y'all it's all good because it's all hood and it seemed like yesterday when i was going through it i'm blessed today and you may not understand it but don't take your life for granted because one day you could be here and be gone the next day the way you planned it it's just the way life goes sometimes but you need to make up your mind you've been in the game for years rolling the weed pills in the blow now maybe somebody done told you before but baby today you need to let it go yo oh, you gotta let it gotta let it gotta let it gotta let it Five, five. 